Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought it's nearing the end of November. I haven't done an empties video for ages. So I thought I would share a few of the things that I'm getting through at a bomb rate um, and definitely plan on buying again. Do we start? So the first up is Living Proof Frizz Conditioner. Now the frizz part is stroked out and um, I guess that's no frizz. Um, and generally speaking, I really like Living Proof as a range. Um, I have what I call combination hair, so oily roots, dry at the ends from um, colouring and um, tonguing, I suppose, particularly a bit at the back, kind of gets ratty and gnarly. I don't know why particularly that section. Anyway, so anything that makes my hair more manageable and I like it smooth and shiny um, and quite resistant to doing all those things to it so I can carry on because I really do like using tongs because otherwise my curls don't have a nice arrangement. Um, so a product that helps me smooth all of that out that holds style well because when I tongue my hair, if I don't have product in it, it will tend to drop out quite quickly strong, willful Irish hair. I think I've told you that before. Um, but it, it shouldn't be a product that tends to weigh hair down. And some conditioners can just leave hair almost a bit lank and um, over-moisturized, if you will. So I really, really like this product um, for just being about right when it comes to nourishing my hair, leaving it manageable, but also making it easy to style. And I've been tending to then use this in combination with their spray for the roots, which gives it a bit of body. Can't remember the name of it right now, but when I have it empty, I will share it with you. And also using the Aura Bay Styling Cream in the ends to manage um, that kind of, sort of dry crispiness that I sometimes um, I'm troubled by. But yeah, I really like this. Um, yeah, no negatives really, and cool packaging too, which I think is important for the shower. Next. Up for the body is this Shea and Blue Blood Oranges Bond Body and Hand Wash. Now I use this in the shower, it does have fragrance in, however in a wash off product that's on my skin for a relatively little time, I'm prepared to compromise on the exacting nature of the rules that I have for my face. For my body I'm okay with a bit of scent and I just love the smell of blood oranges is something so invigorating and it's different to a normal orangey scent it just is um i love blood oranges to drink whenever they're in season and i seem to love it when they're in a shower gel so i love this and i bought this before and i will buy it again um so yeah well done shea and blue for creating a really uplifting scent for the morning shower now <laughs> not to bang on about burberry bright glow but can we talk about this problem so, um, Burberry Bright Glow in porcelain is my colour and it's really sad that this is not going to be available for much longer. And to the extent that um, I have girlfriends in the States who were able to track it down, I'm not sure if it was in a store or if it was in DK Maxx or some other place, but either way, they knew that they had to get me whatever they could lay their hands on. And Caroline, if you're watching, um, a big thank you for um, my extra birthday present. She, she was so considerate, she got me Bright Glow in porcelain and nude ochre because she'd seen that I wore both. Porcelain's a better colour for me, but you know what? I'll take both. <laughs> so yeah, um, so one of those bottles is coming to me from Santa Fe in uh, New Mexico. That's my last bottle of my own stock. I will be scraping out the very last bit with the pump, but um, yeah, bad times, my friends. So if anyone has found a product that they like as much as Bright Glow and that they feel as passionate about Bright Glow and then have found something else that they like as much as it, please do share in the comments down below. Anyway, um, more makeup ones, as I said to you. So some of you might remember um, my Facebook group, Plight, um, where I was in the airport having come home to Northern Ireland without any eyebrow maintenance products, which, you know, can be disastrous for a gal. And um, everyone steered me in the direction of um, Benefit, which I say not typically a brand I go towards. I'm sure they've got many fine products, but, um, and I bought the Goof Proof Brow Pencil in number four, that's it, number four. And I bought the um, Precision My Brow Pencil because I wanted to see, you know, which product was best for my brows. And 
Generally speaking, I like a fine nib and um, to be able to go in and painstakingly paint them on one by one and really mimic the appearance of brows in their natural state. But as you can see, I've used this one right down to the final little nub, um, kind of annoying. Uh, so I'm gonna have to get a new one of those. And in the meantime, I'm forced to use this one. And I think I've got better at using this. It has a sort of a, a triangular wedge excuse me, um, a triangular wedge kind of um, shaped end. So you don't get quite the same fine featheriness, but I think what it is good at, at doing though is it makes it a little bit easier to create a more artful shape. Um, and sometimes you need a bit of this first, and maybe you finish off with a bit of that as well, just to kind of create the feathery edges. So um, liking both actually, I think I'll probably repurchase this as well. And then all the brow things are coming to an end at the same time. Glossier Boy Brow um, is running out. So I've um, been using this for a while now, like it very much. Um, have been known to occasionally tint up, uh, touch up my um, hair roots with it. So um, versatile. And I will definitely buy that again too. Now, what else have we got here? So two la last makeup products. The first one being um, uh, Laura Mercier Eye Basics in Flax. Now, I use this every time that I wear a liquid liner. So for any events, for filming, I just like a little, you know, meow, sort of feline cat flick eyeliner situation. And this just seems to stop product from transferring up onto the top of my um, upper eyelid, which is kind of annoying, especially at dinner. Um, and it's just a nice neutral, it takes away kind of any bluish discoloration of lids and particularly useful if you're prone to oily lids, which I am. So um, I bought this, this is number three, I think. Anastasia Borovic, amazing makeup artist friend of mine showed me this product years ago when we worked together and I was filming a TV show for TLC called initially Last Chance Salon and then it was rebranded as um, Extreme Beauty Disasters. I think it's thought to be more arresting as a name when you're scrolling late at night. Um, but yeah, so we discovered that at that time and um, it's been in my kit ever since. And then the final product is this rather sad and pathetic, and I fear slightly chewed, I swear a cat's been at this pencil. Um, it bears the telltale marks that Ginger has been playing with this. <laughs> he does this thing where he gets onto the, it's terrible, he shouldn't be allowed in the bathroom on doing makeup, but he chucks things off and then you'll play with it and then things go missing and then they resurface in a complete different part of the house. Anywho, naughty cat. Um, and as you can see, you used almost, almost down to the bottom. Um, and that was, I believe, Givenchy in, uh, in beige um, mousseline. And I remember buying this in, in Sephora in Monaco um, two summers ago, I think. So it's lasted me very well. And um, yeah, I'll buy that again. It's great, nude, creamy, not too beige, doesn't dry out. And great for just a little bit extra on the lip line. So there you have it, um, November Empties. I hope you enjoyed that. A bit more frivolous than the videos have been of late. Um, please subscribe if you liked it and see you again soon. Bye for now.